We're yes, set. We're, yes, we're, we're ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that whole Milwaukee, this is Pastor Walter Owens, right here at Focus 2020 with the mysterious one, the one that always take his time trying to figure things out. And he called himself, what, what are you over there laughing for? <laughs> I mean, what, boy, I, I love you. I love you too. I love you, man. But, uh, but, but, okay, this is take 54. <laughs> you want to introduce uh, our, our audience who you are? My name is Pastor Charles Ibri. <laughs> oh, you forgot the hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> boy, I mean, this is this is good. This is good. I just love Sean, man, because he's just sitting back so patient. He got patient. so much patience, though. He does, know. he does, because he knows that you are very <laughs> consistent in what you be doing. Man, man, man. You know, he give you a week off, and you come back. <laughs> I, I think, you know what, Pastor, I think sometimes you just sit at the house and figure out what you're going to do when you do <laughs> You know what? I think I do, too. Do you? Yes, sir. Well, that takes me to the <laughs> subject today. <laughs> <laughs> and that is this. What makes you lean on your own understanding? Myself. <laughs> yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, Amen. How you been doing, though, man? I'm doing great. I, just, I missed you. I missed you, too. Yeah, so I'm I glad to be back. Praise God. Praise I can't God. make it without you. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're a good salesman. I'll buy that seat of sales on dry land. <laughs> you know, I just want to thank all our listeners uh, joining in with us today at Joy 1340 AM at 98.7. Again, I'm Pastor Walter Owens, and I'm sitting across from Pastor Charles Emery. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, Pastor, you know, um, the way you was just acting up in the studio day, it took me to this title again. <laughs> what makes us lean on our own understanding? You know, that is a very interesting question. Why? Because we don't realize we do that sometimes. Mm, mm. You know, many times we're leaning on our own understanding, and it's because we we get distracted by ourselves. Okay, okay. You know, and I was looking at the scripture in Proverbs chapter three, uh, five and six: uh, "Trust in the Lord with all thy heart; lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path." And it brought me to an understanding that the key factor is lack of trust. Mm, mm. So when we don't trust God, we trust in our own abilities, we lean on our own wisdom, Okay. we do okay. Our, lean on our own understanding, and we neglect God's wisdom and his understanding on how he wants to structure and guide and direct our life. You know, so in other words, instead of trusting in on our own thoughts, our own pattern, allowing things that we do, right cause a lot of confusion and distractions in our life, we should have a, a heart and trust in the Lord. You know, I, I, I'm looking at when you just read that, I love that scripture uh, passage you just shared with us in Proverbs 3 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Well, you know, a lot of times we always say, I'm going to trust in the Lord if he's going to yes. help me do anything, but why is it you feel, Pastor, that we do not go with him with a pure heart and we want to do it our way? Because a lot of times we have a selfish agenda. Mm. You mm. know, we, we're looking to you know to get what we want, the way we want it, and the method we're going to use for our own self to get what we're trying to get. To, okay. You okay. know, it's like okay. a person you know wants to. I, I used one time in one of the teachings I was doing before. It's when you go for a job interview. You know you're not qualified for the position you're applying for, so you make up all these, these characteristics and, and things that you know how to do, even though you don't know how to do it, and you put it on your resume to, make, to, to you know, deceive the employer to look at your resume to, oh, this person really qualified. Oh, we can use them in our company so you can get hired. But when you get the, get the position, you don't know what to do. Why? Because you lean on your understanding and you manipulate to get into the position. Okay, okay. Because I was just going to yeah. ask you, is that what you do when you go put a house in? <laughs> I used to. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, at least you are. I faked it till I made it. <laughs> but you know what? I like what you just said uh, there because a lot of times, you know, uh, that does happen. 
you know, and that comes with, with trusting and believing in the Lord, is that if we do what is asked of him, yeah. it would make it more easier for us. You know, you were sharing something yeah. when I'm just looking over in 1 Corinthians um, 13 and 12 to say, for now we see in our mirror. Yeah. But yeah. then face to face, now I know it is a part, then I shall fully understand what's going on. Right. Help us with that there, you know, uh, looking in the mirror. Okay, also it goes on to say, it says, we see only part of the picture God is painting. Mm -hmm. If we are truly uh, we are truly to trust him, we have to let go of our pride, our programs, and our plans. Even the best laid human plans cannot begin to approach the magnificent uh, sagacity of God's plan, which is the, the quality of God's wisdom. For the foolishness of God is wiser than the human wisdom. And, and then it says, even the weak, weakness of God is, is greater than man. Grand man's, you know, weakness. Because God is so sovereign and he's holy, it's like no matter what we try to do, we never measure up in our own standards. You know, just like it says, you know, God's plan. God has a plan for every person in this life. Mm -hmm. You know, say the unsaved, he still have a plan for you. And But it's up to you to seek his face to get in the plan, to walk in that plan, abide in that plan. But a lot of times we get blinded by selfish ambitions and our own prideful heart to where... You know, God's taking too long. I ain't got time to wait on God. You know, I know I trust God. I claim I trust God, but do I really trust God mm, when things mm, happen in my life? Am I really good. trusting that's God good. when problems come that I can't handle? Am I really trusting God when I'm getting afflicted? You know, I think it's on this line of, of fact of mind because so many of us as born-again believers say we trust God until something happens that's out of the ordinary. Then it throws us for a loop, and then we forget about the trust in God. Now we're trying to trust in ourselves how I can fix it myself. Mm. That is that's, that's, that is really good, Pastor. Now, the reason I'm saying that's really good because that's where we find ourselves getting caught up in the same trap. It's like a... Uh, People always say, why is this continually happening to me? Why am I going through the same thing? Well, for one, I'm learning that you're not changing your ways. You know, you, you, you're trying to figure everything out for yourself. Notice I said for yourself. Yeah. But where is God in that? You know, uh, we shouldn't, I hear you say, we shouldn't rely right. on our own understanding. Right. You know, I'm looking at, at, at in verse 5, uh, I'm sorry, verse 7 of that same Proverbs 3. It says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bone. Absolutely. So in other words, we need to change what we're looking at. Yes. We change your to, focus. Come on. Come on now. Yeah, we got to change our focus because we get to just, you know, they say uh, a, obscure, a, a obscure focus and what I mean, darkness getting in the way of your focus. Mm. So anything that's obscure is in, is in, invisible. You can't see it. Okay. You know. Okay. So so when we allow darkness, like I was reading the scripture yesterday, uh, and Luke, I forgot where it is, but it says, "If thy eye be full of light, then your body be full of light. But if your eye be evil, then your 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 uh, life will be full of darkness." You know, and and that's the same thing when it comes to our focus on God. If our eye is single, focus on God. That's the singleness focus on God, then I can see the light in the pathway God is showing me that, hey, you got to go this way. Don't go that way. You go this way. Because if you go the wrong way, you're going to find yourself in destruction. But if you go the way I'm guiding you, because he guides us by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And what he guides us to is up to us to say, okay, God, I surrender. I'm going to follow your way. But like I said, pride settles in and haughtiness, arrogancy. So we like, you know what? I tried God's way. And it seemed like it didn't do anything good for me. Things just seemed to get worse and worse in my life. The more I try to trust God, things don't turn around for me. And so God, you know, tells us in his word, a way of a transgressor is hard. But the path of the righteous is smooth. Why? Because transgressor, you're going against what God is trying to do in your life. When you get to the place and recognize, okay, it must be something 
that I'm not doing, the reason why this seems to be in a turmoil in my life. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as I trust God, now I can receive God's grace and his direction and his guidance so things can get back into the right track you want to be in my life. You know, uh, uh, I just want to echo what you were just saying there, Pastor, when you were saying trust God. And when we go against the prick, when we fight against God, there's yeah. a, we create a problem. Yes. You know, I was so blessed. My wife, she taught me into doing this. And I was like, I, it had to go through my mind over and over and over. And I prayed on it with this uh, this vaccine shot. Yes. And I was like, well, God, do I really need this? And he shared this with me, Pastor. He said, you know, Walter, did not tell you that I have already created an antidote, but you and you all took me out of the equation. Wow. And, and I thought about that. I thought about that real hard. And I was like, well, what, what you trying to say, God? He said, just like our title here, what makes us lean on our own understanding? He said, for my people, I know what my people need. Right. And when... He started, when the antidote happened, mm -hmm. you notice now people are starting, the, the numbers and everything, they're, started, dropping. they're yeah. dropping. Yeah. But yeah. God said those who lean on their, on, on their own understanding is going to create a problem. Right. He said, although I'm doing this step by step, your ways is not my ways. Your understanding is not my understanding. Right. But I'm doing it step by step to see if you're going to be obedient. Right. And we Absolutely. still see people today, although they're taking the shot, but they're they're going back to their old ways. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense? Yes, it does. You know, uh, just this past week, they had this, uh, the NBA uh, All-Star game, and they okay. showed down in, in, in Georgia all mm -hmm. those people that's out unmasked having a party but that's what the enemy wants yes it is and we have to keep our focus on christ at all times Pastor. that's what i feel yes. myself. so i went and had my shot and i was like wow this ain't that bad so i'm asking myself i'm asking myself i'm speaking to me now mm -hmm. and, and through god i'm like is this going to help me again my son mm -hmm. didn't i tell you that i have already created the antidote for to help you because he knows yes, he does. what you need yes, he does. before we do. You got something there. What you yes, I was um just I also I remember they had lifted I think I think it was in Georgia where they lifted the ban for wearing the mask down uh, there, but okay. they don't have to wear the mask no more. Uh -huh. You know, um and that's that's the thing, it's the deception of the enemy to make you think things are well when it's not well. You know, and the problem comes in when we trust in man and not trust in God. Man, they have you get into a place of a downfall when God is trying to bring you up, the enemy bringing you down. You know, like I was talking about um, my lesson last night on the Bible class about spiritual warfare. The spiritual warfare is very dangerous grounds to tread on if you're not, not anointed by God to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You can't fight a battle if you don't know the strategy of the enemy. I like that. You know, like you got to know the strategy of the enemy. Not only that, you got to operate in wisdom. You got to walk in discernment. You got to walk in authority. And if you don't walk in the foundation of how to deal with your enemy, man could be your enemy and tell you, you know what, this is okay to don't wear a mask in a large crowd of people. It's okay to do what you want to do because God knows your heart. Yes, he does. Jeremiah, what is it, 17, 11, I believe it, he said, God says, the heart of man is definitely wicked. Who knew it? Save God. And he will render to every man according to the fruit of his doing. Why? Because God designed us he knows what's going to draw our attention and what's going to be our desire. He knows what's going to lead you in the pathway of your own way or going to lead you back to his way. And a lot of times we, we're led by our own way, like I mentioned before, selfishness. Mm -hmm. we, we get mm -hmm. selfish. We don't want God's help. We want our help the way we want it because it's comfortable. You know, so we get into a place of our comfort zone and we say, okay, I don't need God here because I can handle this. But over here, I ain't ready to let that go. So I'm going to hold on to this too. So it's like I mentioned to one person about habits and addictions. You know, if you have addictions and habits in your life that you know is not of God, that's so the enemy uses a strategy to keep you from knowing who amen, you are. Amen, amen, amen. But you know, I just want to echo off in scripture yes. Yes. or what you're just talking about. Go with me, Pastor, over to the book of Ecclesiastes. Yes. And uh, we were looking at something, uh, help me, Holy Spirit, uh, Ecclesiastes 10, in verse, eight. In verse 8. Now, mm -hmm. now, just what you was talking about, he... He who digs a pit will fall into it. 
Yeah. What pit are we talking about here? Well, that pit could be anything that's a destruction that the enemy is in your life. <laughs> no, no, I like yeah. that. I like yeah. that. I like because, that. Because, you know, we can have a pit of trying to uh, hurt somebody else because I just don't like the way a person looks. If we can we can have a pit in our lives of, of trying to slander somebody because they may have said something that you didn't like. It might have been true. You didn't want to accept. So we dig a ditch for uh, for somebody else which for to bring destruction in their lives. But God says the same thing you're doing for somebody else, you're going to fall in it. Mm -hmm. But then it goes on and it says, Whoso breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. I was reminded of the bronze, uh, bronze and serpent that God told Moses to build in, 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 in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. When the children of Israel, were, uh, because of their rebellion, God allowed these serpents to come out and start biting the people. Remember the story? Yes, yes. So yes. God allowed it to happen, but then he says, Moses cried to God, God have mercy on the people, don't destroy them. And Moses, God said, okay, Moses, here's what I need to do. Get a pole and make a, put a bronze serpent on it, and he said, and hold it up. Whoever look upon it will be healed. Right? Mm -hmm. The enemy, he knows that God has a remedy to anything he brings against you. The enemy already know that. So what he wants you to do, he wants you not to know he know that. Because God already has a plan. Anytime the enemy brings something for your demise, God has a plan to destroy his plan to build you up, to keep you moving forth in his will and his plan and his purpose. Amen. Because in, in verse 9 of that same chapter of Ecclesiastes, it says, He who quarrels a stone may be hurt by them, and he who split wood may be endangered by it. Yes. If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength, but wisdom brings success. Yes. And, and, and one thing that uh, I like what, what, what you were saying here in your illustration is that if we know that we fall in the pit and we blame someone else yes it's like that snake it's, yes. it's gonna bite us yeah it's gonna bite us and that's why i always say pastor satan knows who pastor charles is but do pastor charles know absolutely who he is? And, and and that's why the enemy he's he's the great illusionist yes i will lose the yes. magician a lot of yep. hocus pocus mm -hmm. but one thing that i notice around the world and i watch uh just a little bit just to see what's going on you know, I'm just looking at how the enemy is taking the word of God and using it against his people. We cannot keep our focus on what God's saying to right, us. Right. You know, uh, we got the pandemic. Okay, we got that. Mm -hmm. There's a cure for it. Now you're done. You're going to find something else is to keep the people of God mind off of him. Why do you think it's just so easy for us to be distracted of what the world is saying instead of what God has already said. Well, you know what? It's because we remove ourselves from the hedge. That's another point. The serpent can't bite you if you're in a hedge of protection. But if the hedge is moved or breaches in your hedge, then the enemy can come in to your foundation and bite you with mm. the poison that he has to destroy you. And a lot of Christians, they lose that protection because we stop getting in God's word. The more you stay in God's word and focus on God, you build yourself up upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. The word builds a protection around you. Like the song said, Jesus built a fence around me every day. God does that. He builds a fence around us to protect us, to keep us inside so the enemy can't come in where you are. But instead, we let a little sin, get a little leaven, leaven a whole lump. So we let a little sin get in our lives, which creates a breach. And once that breach is open, the enemy has free access in and out of your life. Ooh, I like that, Pastor, because I saw something earlier, and it has some acronyms. Yeah. And what I love, oh, yeah. about, what, what I saw, <laughs> saw about that is like what you just talking about. Even if we fail in anything, God said it's this. The F is first, the A is for attempt, the I is in, and the L is for learning. In other words, first attempt in learning. Yes. yes. So when the enemy try to do whatever he wants against us, yes. turn back from your understanding and to yes. the Lord. Because somewhere I read in the scriptures it said where the enemy would try to come to do it for bad. Right. But God turned it for, it for good. It. So Absolutely. even when we 
fail. We just got to know. It's yeah. my first attempt in learning. Yeah. And then the end. Yes. The effort never dies. Wow. I love it. You know, the effort. Yes. The effort. If you stay focused in Christ, your effort will never die. And then on. Right. The next opportunity. Yes. No. What is your next opportunity that you want from God? My next opportunity, you know, to get into the place of having my own church again one day. Okay. You know? Okay. That's what okay. I want God to do for okay. me, and I believe He's going to do it in the proper time in the season that He sets in order for me to, to walk out into it. Listeners, I want y'all to get what He just said. It's all about the season that God yes wants yes. for us, yes. and that's what we have to do. That's why I, I, we titled the message today not. Yeah. Concentrate leaning on your understanding, but leaning yourself towards God. Yeah. Because Absolutely. one thing about God, uh, you know, last night on our prayer line, we were blessed uh, with uh, one of our dear sisters on there. And what God showed me in the spirit, he said, just let everybody on the prayer line know that it is done yes. and finished. That's right. Did you catch that? God yes, said it is already done, but it's finished. Yes. So if you ask me, whatever you ask me in, in my son's name, it shall be given and shall be done. There was healing. Yes. And he said, one of the problems that you all continually make, you come to me and I take what you have asked me. Yes. And I'm putting it together for you. Before I could finish giving it to you, you step in and destroy it. Yeah, we do. We do it all the time. Why? Because it's selfish. Why? We want things our way, and we don't want to follow God's way because God's way takes too long. <laughs> I used to be like that. That's why I can say that, you know, trying to get ahead in life, and you trying to do the shortcuts. No shortcuts ain't always the best way to get to what you want in life. It'll bring, bring you more trouble later on down the road. Amen. You know, Amen. so you got to get to the place where we humble ourselves Amen. before the mighty hand of God, and he will lift us up and just see. You know, Pastor, it's good being back home. And yes. uh, I just want to quick uh, thank our dear sisters that we had last month, Sister Jackie Dawson. We used her book for the month of the ladies. We also had... I did uh, sister yeah. April Price, April the Price. and yeah. last least the little young one, yeah. Melody Lawrence. Yes, and yes. we just want to thank all of them, and we want to thank every one of our listeners that is with us every week here, at Joy thirteen forty AM and ninety eight point seven. Again, I'm Pastor Walter Owens, and Pastor John. Before we get out of here, as I always do, give our listeners an encouraging word and a quick prayer. Amen. I just want to encourage you who are listening today to allow yourself to be humble before the mighty hand of God, that he would guide you in the path that he has chosen for you and allow his spirit to guide you in the direction he has for your life. So, Lord, we thank you for this lesson going on across the airways that it would not fall upon deaf ears, but it bring a change in the lives of the hearers of God, that their lives be more freer and fruitful in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. All right, welcome. Now, about the picture. Remember, somebody doing a picture one day? We're going to mention it to Ryan. Oh, okay. Get a okay. chance. <laughs>